Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Humanities, true art. Paisal, eighth ring nobleman of the Sabolan Imperium, an ambassador to the Earth Republic, ran quickly past his staff, who were all frantically packing everything that they could be easily gathered. He took a shortcut through the courtyard garden where a pair of guardsmen were burning sensitive documents with their plasma repeaters. He repeated to himself over and over, I do not have the time for this, I do not have the time for this, I do not have the time for this. He paused for a moment outside of the conference room where he straightened his clothing and sash of office. He was appalled to see his cooling slime and stained the sash that was presented to him by the Empress herself. He breathed deeply, calming himself, and he entered the room. Displaying a false appearance of calm that belayed his panic, he greeted the human inside. Sorrowful greetings, Vice President Doniger. I am sorry I cannot give you much time. Our shuttles are landing soon to remove my staff and equipment. My government has ordered the subordinate citizens off of Earth before the Ferenthrax fleet arrives. My Empress regrets that we will be unable to offer any assistance to your people, as the Imperium has declared its neutrality in this conflict. I have also been authorized by the Third Galactic Council to inform you that since Earth Republic is only the provisioning member of the Council, no help can be expected from any of the member races. He was embarrassed at having blurted out the contents of the message that he received earlier today without proper decorum, but was surprised at the human's calm demeanor. His thong looked around and pressed the device to his lapel. This has disabled any recording devices, so I may say this privately. Although we are officially neutral, there will be some room on board my private shuttle. I can find some space for your family and that of your president, if I list them as personal household staff. I can bring them to my homeworld, and I swear by the eighth tentacle of clicks that I will keep them safe. I wish I could do more. He trailed off, sadly. Vice President Donegar gave a slight smile and shook his head. On behalf of my president and myself, I thank you, Ambassador. It is very kind of you, but unnecessary. The president has made it clear that no family members of himself or his cabinet will be leaving Earth until this conflict is over. He paused for a moment, reaching out to touch the small tentacle of the ambassador. But I do appreciate it, Heistel. I surely do. Your kindness will not be forgotten. He straightened up and adjusted his tie. But now I have some official information for you to convey to your government and... Also to the council. Heistel nodded and activated the recorders again. Vice President Doniger laid his briefcase on the meeting table and extracted a few books, a stack of photographs and a pair of data chips, and spoke with a formality that he'd never heard from the human. I am afraid that the Earth Republic has not been entirely forthcoming with your people. Or to the council... You are aware that we humans have a long history of fighting amongst ourselves, but no one, not even our citizens, are aware of the full extent of the history. After our last world war, so much was lost, and the founders of the Republic decided that for the mental health and stability of the human race, much of our collective history would be restricted to senior government personnel and our military officers. The vice president pushed a stack to the ambassador. We need you to present this information to your empress and to the council to prepare them for what is about to happen. The ambassador leafed through the ancient pictographs on piles of human bodies, massive war machines, and whole cities that were naught but charred ruins. His eyes raised in horror to the human, who nodded sadly to the ambassador. You see, heist though. The reason we have tried to so very, very hard to be peaceful is that we are far too good at war and killing when we aroused to anger. When the Venthrax destroyed our colonies, claiming that we were encroaching on their territory, we were upset, but were willing to withdraw to keep the peace. But when they captured the Ypsilanti and broadcast the execution of all of its children to our colonies. They 
Wade, massive mistake. They thought that they would demoralize us. But they woke something primal in our people. Something we have spent hundreds of years burying beneath the veneer of civilization. The ambassador looked at one of the books. The title caught his eye. He looked to the human. The art of war. This must be a missile translation, sir. War is not an art. The vice president shook his head sadly. You are very wrong, ambassador. For humans, war is an art we have been mastering for thousands of years, as the Venthrax are about to find out. He leaned in, his eyes as hard as flint. You have to prepare the council for what is to come. The ambassador whispered, well, What are you going to do? The vice president activated the hollow crystal, and Heistel recognized the rings of the planet Saturn in the background. What his mind could not cross was the immense fleet that was displayed. Hundreds of massive capital ships surrounded by numberless smaller escort ships. The image disappeared, only leaving the human space with a look of terrible resolve. We are going to paint the whole galaxy in their blood. It's going to be humanity's masterpiece. End of story. Story number two. Jury rigging, written by entangled bottles. So, Alex said with a sigh, what you're saying is that, um, unless we, by some miracle, get some more firepower, we'll all be dead when the raiders get you. The century. And I'm the only engineer on board. Correct. And for that reason, you want me to do something about this? Yes. You do know today was the first day in my life I even saw a plasma gun. Right? Yes. Normally, we would let someone as primitive as you tinker with our superior tech. And, by law, we aren't allowed to. But, <clears throat> I'd rather die from a plasma call mouth done than in a raider slave pen. And, hey, maybe by some luck, your primitive machines are similar enough to ours that you find some solution that, um, doesn't leave me dead. Greater. Just greater. Very well. Show me to the available tech, then. Alex couldn't make heads or tails of the alien tech, as expected, but was surprised by the sheer amount of guns available and the fact that they barely had any recoil. If you have this many guns, why are the raiders a problem? Well, um, we only have five guards, and the rest of us would be unlikely to hit one with ten shots, even if we all focused on the same guy. We'd never take down his shields. Okay, so basically you just need more projectiles to hit the same spot. At the same time... Well, yes. Got it. Got any duct tape? Thraxel proudly strode down the trading ship, confident that his raider band would have no problem capturing the vessel. Scanner showed that the crew that he was boarding had abandoned all non-vital systems grouping up around the engine room and the life support. Thraxel considered the signatures grouping him proud. Would have been easier to pick them off one by one. But, oh well, this would serve as practice. So long as he cycled his troops well, the enemy should be unable to even dent their armor, pass their shields, deciding to follow the cues of the enemy. He gathered his forces together and descended on the life support room, mindful not to step into any trap. He moved his forces slowly, until only one corridor remained, leading to the life support room. Taking a deep breath, he rounded the corner with his troops, guns raised. In front of him was a little wall of guns pointed at him. For a moment, he failed to even process that. Not even military forces could put that many soldiers so close together. In a flash of light, all the guns fired, and the two soldiers in front of him practically vanished. The Thraxian's own shields issued warnings. Quickly ducking back into cover, Thraxar struggled to get to his grips. But before he had a chance, the door at the end of the corridor that he was in opened by itself revealing another wall of guns. What? Uh, but there aren't even that many life signatures in that room. It was with another flash of light. Several raiders went down, followed by another flash and another. The entire corridor was filled with projectiles, and soon Thraxor too was claimed by the blasts. 
In the engine room, Brandion, the captain of the trading ship, looked at his terminal in disbelief. Half of the raiders were caught in the automated trap by life support. The rest are moving back to their ship. Crap, Alex cursed. They'll no doubt destroy the ship once they get back to their own. Why? It'd be impossible to reclaim anything useful from the wreckage. Revenge? I mean, we did just kill half the friends. So, uh, what do we do now? Now? Now we follow plan B. The raiders ran towards their ship, desperate to get off this death trap. They rounded the last corridor and came face to face with the trading ship's security and one strange bipedal creature, each of them held seven guns. The raiders barely had time to wonder how before they were vaporized by the jury-rigged weapons. Brandio stared in amazement at the carnage, caught between awe and nausea. Curiously, he tried to pick up one of the weapons the human had fashioned, but found that he could barely even lift it, much less aim it. What is this thing, Alex? That, um, that is what we on Earth call a, a volley gun. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Duck Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.